since the dawn of time. Birds have sung, bees have danced, and humans have told stories. And what is the natural progression of this? But to tell stories with props and costumes and singing, this is the basis of all theater. In the age of myths, humans didn't have formal theater traditions, but in the north they would tell stories of legendary figures and animals, particularly seals, and stock characters in song form, but with funny voices and each of the characters would have their own voice. Sometimes puppets would be involved, especially with children. In the south, they would reenact fables and witchy advice with their neighbors, and sing and chant helpful rhymes, and some of the casting of spells could have been seen as theater there, but they had a very particular function and were sometimes more science than art. Then in the south, the Sphonic people, after the first death of Julia, began telling tales of her life and then reenacting it uh, for her benefit at the beginning because they didn't know that she kept her memories every time she reincarnated. And the second Julia enjoyed this so much and encouraged it even though she did keep her memories, and she was just happy to see her wisdom spread further. As a Tsarinov, she would help fund particularly talented actors, and so theater proper began with one foot in morality plays and one foot in realism. As the art form spread, Sphonic began to incorporate morality fables as plays as well as field music and rhymes, and some would even depict or use spells purely for art. And this spun off to become its own thing, its own form of dance called circle dancing, and was surprisingly not exclusively witches, though mm, this is also the origins of pole dancing in the South, as it's easier to correct, spin the correct sigils around a central point with a pole at the center. Sphonic theater involved a one-to-one -one ratio of characters to players, and players were supposed to look like their characters as much as possible, despite the morality play bit of things. Some people were even criticized as looking for looking too pretty when playing the Cirrus because Yulia was famous for dressing in simple garments during this period. Elsewhere, Telethenian theater began as public philosophical debates and public trials. These evolved into public recitations of previous debates, and then putting them to meter, and then writing new poetry. Formal dance evolved to be mathematical alongside their music. These collective influences evolved into the chorus that we know today, and people wearing masks to clearly indicate whether they were publicly reciting someone else's belief and not their own. To prevent people from lying and to help trace where these beliefs come from, the sash system then came into play. This isn't still used today to mark who is truly a citizen of the after Pretoria and what their role is. In the north, around the time of Rev Solish, about 400 years ago, the oral tradition revolved to have more specific forms of the songs, and more people were expected to learn to sing songs, or at least have their own unique verse to sing, um, but the melodies became more standardized as a means of telling history. Character voices and accents became very specific, and some costumes became iconic. However, sort of like opera, you didn't have to move around, you just entered and exited and maybe stood up or sat down and sang and played whatever instrument you had along with your role. Maybe some minor hand gestures or props were involved. Uh, this means they often explicitly said what they were doing rather than demonstrating it, so this became a really important part of Northern theater. Today, while the oral bardic tradition still carries the music in the North, in terms of theater, Sagan really leaned into puppetry, dolls, and shadow plays, as the Sega would use their magic to bring the pieces of life and teach practical lessons of dangerous activities, like climbing, sailing, and fighting, as well as history and mythology. And in modern times, this has evolved into human-sized puppets that actually act as costumes and traveling circus entertainers who present these stories in on their ships or in wagons. Uh, one hall in particular is famous for focusing on and sponsoring the art form, though this sort of work also works as their way of investigating automation. Uh, face paint is also frequently part of costuming, using old billion runes for specific types of characters, much like how in modern times they wear war paint. And they were typically worn on, uh, performed on carts or ships that you could visit, or if you were rich enough, you could just host them in your hall. In Nova Thule, shadow plays became much more popular, typically set to music, and sometimes in tiny music boxes that cast shadows, uh, dolls are, ended up being considered crude and for children. Um, but this evolved into shadow dances before briefly becoming actual dances set to music and poetry being recited, and sometimes by the actors themselves, but usually by a chorus or musicians on the side. 
Um, but the body language is intended to be uh, slightly stylized, but with realistic facial uh, uh, realistic facial expressions, much like how their paintings are stylized, um, but lean towards realism these days. And it so the facial expressions end up doing a lot of the work. Sometimes there will be extended periods of no speaking and only dance, and uh, and dance and music, and these are typically performed in people's homes or just on the streets. Uh, but special effects in ease contraptions or alchemy or other such effects are used to enhance the performance, and nobles in particular, such as my family, were expected to tip to learn how the secrets of how it was done. So really, theater was just an extension of our industrial military complex. In the modern after Katoria, the union of the Telethonian and Sonic styles, mainstream theater at this point is basically uh, somewhere in between the two, though the traditions of both definitely still exist in purer forms. Uh, they both still value morality lessons, though with a new focus on logic and philosophy, recounting previous effects and metered speech is valued over prose. Costumes have grown more elaborate and more specific, and costume design is also now its whole its own art form, uh, but certain costumes are very iconic at this point and you can't change them. Dance has become a little bit more of its own separate art form, and is a little uh, considered to be typically a little too tacky to include in your theater unless you're depicting a dance in the play, or you're enhancing a specific musical composition, so in opera, that's still allowed. Now, the biggest difference between the two styles today is phonic style theater tends to have more people with more realism, more improv, and more melodic music. Meanwhile, Telethenian style theater favors two to ten actors with masks to indicate their roles, more rhyming and alliteration in the, uh, in the dialogue, and less improv and less music. But with both musical tradition evolving to be more rhythmic in the last 400 odd years, mus musicals and operas are not unpopular. They are, and in fact, many of them are growing a unique style all of their own. Musicians are often actors and will carry their instruments onto the stage as they play for their role. Theaters in the after Pretoria often look similar to shrines, except with entrances for actors at both the stage, the roof, and the back, with stone benches and stone cushions for the audience. You can wander in and out of a theater in the after Kratoria at any time to get food or drinks, which are sold in the lobby, but you're not supposed to make th noise or throw things at the stage except at designated moments. East contraptions can be used to send an actor's voice to the back of the room now in the best theaters, and whispering while sending your voice to the back of the room is this super neat effect that gives people tingles, and it's reserved for mysterious characters or magical moments. I'm actually going to be going to my first theater performance in the Atricatoria very soon. You should go see it too. It's called Semenium Girls. It's a Zavlakic opera, and it will be available this December 21st in your time. Ring that bell to be notified when it goes live.